Hey people, how are you doing today, this this morning, this afternoon actually, wherever you are? Um, my name is Mikaeda Valletta, um, also known as The Body Scientist, and I'm live on my IG page, The Body Scientist. Um, I will save it and repost it to my YouTube page. Um, make sure you follow me in both places, but in case you don't know who I am, you're not familiar with me, I um, am a strength and conditioning coach, a sports nutritionist with a background in exercise and sports science, uh, nutrition bio nutritional biochemistry, and um, also um, into cannabis medicine, okay? And just studying all the ways that we can take our body to its highest level, all right? Um, so today, there's a few things I want to talk about, okay? So some of you are familiar with my background, but not only do I have a background in nutrition science, um, but in exercise science, but the graduate program I was in, in um, nutrition, was the only program in the country that's not funded by the food industry, okay? So all of the nutrition programs in this country are funded by the food industry, the food companies. All of the medical programs in this country are funded by the pharmaceutical industry, okay? The pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry are the same. I mean, sorry. The pharmaceutical companies and the food companies are the same people. They're the same people, okay? They absolutely control politics, okay? The, the amount of power that they have is way more than you can even imagine, all right? Now, when I first started off in college, I was a biotechnology major. And um, for two years before I got to exercise and sports science. So originally, what I wanted to do was become a scientist in research cures for genetic diseases, okay? So I was very much interested in infectious disease, especially after taking microbiology and stuff. But I was very much into infectious disease and also genetic diseases, okay? Um, and so genetics is something that I also know a lot about. And, you know, getting into nutrition, okay, then you also understand that nutrition affects your genes. People think that, um, people think that like, oh, diabetes runs in my family or this thing runs in my family or that because you have, it's in your genetics, it's in the genes or whatever that it's, it's, it, it's written that you're definitely, that's definitely going to be your outcome. But that's not true. We have genotypes and we have phenotypes. Okay. Genotype is what your genes code for, like what the code is, you know, the potential. Phenotype is exact is what actually gets expressed, okay? So in somebody's genes, it could say, you could have the potential to be 6'5", but if you weren't nourished properly when you were a kid, you might only be 5'6", okay? So you didn't reach your full genetic potential, okay? Reaching your full genetic potential has to do with your environment, all right? So it's nature and nurture. I did a YouTube video before about that called Nature and Nurture. So, and I mean, there, there are studies that have been done on identical twins where you take identical twins who live two different lifestyles, okay? One lives a very healthy one, one lives a very non-healthy one, and you see their, their health outcomes and how long they live. So the studies like that have been done. But this is true that there are things that can mutate your genes, there are things that can turn your genes on, and there are things that can turn your genes off, okay? So um, even, and so like when you're talking about things that can mutate your genes, um, those could be carcinogens, mutagens, artificial chemicals in the environment that can make, mutate your genes. And, and now, now it codes for cancer. Cancer is a genetic disease. It doesn't mean when, when, when people hear a genetic disease, they think it means that something you inherited. No, you can have genetic disease means the the disease is coded for in the genes, right? Which is what cancer is. But that can happen because that person was exposed to something that mutated their genes, right? Then you have certain genes that protect and do other things that get turned on, get turned off, all right? Our microbiome is a, plays a critical role. I've been studying microbiome since the 90s, okay? Since I was in high school in the late 90s, okay? I've been aware of the importance of protecting your microbiome, okay? And then as an adult in the work that I've done with people over the years, I've consistently talked about the importance of your microbiome, okay? Period, point blank. If you're addicted to sugar, if you, um, like a lot of people, the kind of, the amount of sugar they can eat is ridiculous. I don't even like, it makes my stomach turn. That's because of their microbiome. People who are obese, a lot of times they have, or have metabolic disorder. They have distorted microbiomes. People who have, um, people who have, um, 
what else was I gonna say? Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought trying to read something. Sorry. Um, people that have allergies, okay, digestive issues, they have a distorted microbiome. Everybody should be eating fermented foods every single day, okay? Most people are not. Now, I'm not going to get super into that in this video because that's not what this video is about. But that is another thing that plays a role. And I have videos where I talk about that. So what I want to get to, okay, because as I said, like my approach to the body is a, has always been about getting to the source of the problem. Like if somebody has a certain uh, health issue or challenge, I don't just think, you know, like medicine is trained to think, okay, what are we going to give this person to stop the symptoms? What are we going to get? I think, why is this happening in the first place? Why do you have digestive issues in the first place? Why do you have allergies in the first place? Why do you have hypertension? Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Or, or you're not producing a certain enzyme. And, you know, with cannabis, you know, there's been a huge, you know, there's been a discovery in, um, you could say, physiology, biology. And that's the endocannabinoid system. Some of you may not be familiar with that. But we have digestive system. We have a circulatory system. We have a respiratory system. We have an immune system. We have a lymphatic system. We also have, okay, an endocannabinoid system. And it's basically, you know, a series of receptors. Not just, people can say CB1 and CB2, but it's actually more complex than that. But I won't get into that here um, in this conversation. But there are receptors that, um, that are found almost in every organ in our body, okay? There are cannabinoid receptors, and our body produces endocannabinoids, okay? So our body produces cannabinoids that bind to these receptors. Then you have the cannabinoids that are in cannabis, which are phytocannabinoids, which also can bind to those receptors or modulate them, okay? And this system, this endocannabinoid system, modulates all the other systems, okay? So does vitamin D. Actually, there's a huge correlation to me between vitamin D and endocannabinoids, okay? And in terms of how important they are, what they do, really important. But, you know, there are certain chronic conditions that people have that now um, researchers are saying, oh, they have an endocannabinoid deficiency. So my question is, why do you have an endocannabinoid deficiency? And I can tell you, anytime somebody has any kind of deficiency, their nutrition is lacking. Okay, because it's like if you think, hmm, the, our body makes endocannabinoids, right? So our body makes them on demand. Our neurons make them on demand. And they bind to these receptors that modulate everything. So why is it that some people have a deficiency in that system? Okay, um, so I'm not going to get super into that in this video either because I have a video called Nutrition and Cannabis, right? But I just wanted to say that it's a very important system. And in my studies, like this whole time, I've been interested in, um, in the science of cannabis medicine, right? I've been interested in how does it work because I've used it for a lot of things and I have clients that have used it for a lot of things. Like, for example, a new thing, because I, I talk in other videos about things I've used it for. When I got into a car accident and it helped with my back, it helped when I ripped my navel ring up. My navel when I was in the pole and I was in so much pain, <laughs> okay? The excruciating pain, didn't get any stitches, didn't get... Um, uh, didn't use the, the antibacterial ointments they use, so I use it to prevent infection and to get rid of the pain. I use it for headaches, um, a wide variety of things, and I have many videos where I talk about it. Um, but I've never had allergies in my life, and like over the past like mm, maybe a few weeks, I was like my nose was irritated. You know, it was like it was like itching and swollen, and I would blow my nose a little bit but still my nose is just irritated and i'm already sensitive to like artificial chemicals i cannot be in a closed up space with like artificial air freshener and like cologne like just chemicals okay i need fresh air okay it's one of the reasons why i don't like hotels but so all of a sudden my nose and i'm like i feel like i'm getting allergies and i'm looking it up like what would i have allergies for at this time and i saw ragweed right which is grows in the midwest and the east coast the two places that i'm at Chicago and New York, right? Or DC. I'm just on the East Coast in the Midwest. So ragweed, that can cause fall allergies. And I said to my, it was driving me crazy. I've never had allergies before. And I'm like, this is miserable. I need my body to function for what I need to do. I need to be able to breathe. Like I can't be. So I said, you know what? Cannabis medicine works for everything. Let me just try this. You know, the oil that I have. I took some of the, is coconut, uh, cannabis infused coconut oil. Put some of it on my finger, had to use this finger because that's the only one with no nails. 
and put it to on the on the top of my nose, right? And that shit calmed everything down because it was like I was sneezing a lot. That's the other thing. And when you sneeze, it's like sneezing and coughing is your body trying to get something out of your system. And I never sneeze. I blow my nose like once a year. Like I don't have any of those issues, right? So I kept, so like when I would blow my nose or touch my nose, if I touched my nose, it would start the sneezing attack. So I'm like, something is irritating me and my immune system is overreacting. That's what allergic reactions are. Uh, when people have auto, you know, immune issues, like it's an overactive immune system. And I know that cannabis, um, the cannabinoids, and a lot of the properties in cannabis helps to modulate, along with vitamin D, um, the immune system response. Right, so I just put that on there topically, it calmed it down, completely calmed it down. I maybe used it a couple times over a few days and then didn't have to use it anymore. I don't have the problem anymore, right? But I remember on, I remember September 3rd, it was the day after I went to the Nas and Wu-Tang concert in Chicago, I woke up the next morning, I could not freaking breathe. I had to breathe out of my mouth in my sleep, which I don't breathe out of my mouth. It's not an efficient way to breathe, okay? And it's like a miserable thing to be sleeping and think you have to breathe out of your mouth because you can't breathe through your nose, okay? That was the day where I was done. I put that oil and it helped so much, right? Um, and so I have numerous stories like that. But one of the classes I'm taking now, okay, is about, um, I'm saying all this to say, let me get to the point, okay, of this video. Um, learning about the history, okay, the history of cannabis medicine in this country and in the world, okay? Like, of course, you know, I grew up around it, not in the, in the medicinal kind of way of what I'm talking about now with using oils and tinctures in a variety of different ways for different issues, but just seeing, you know, um, highly intelligent elders around me who smoked weed and I never looked at it and it was normalized to me. So it wasn't like, but again, I wasn't doing when I was a teenager or anything like that. I was grown before I ever um, smoked anything, but... I just didn't have this net. To me, it was like, okay, you have adults that drink. When you're a kid, you, you're around adults who are drinking rum or drinking beer or drinking wine. You know that's not for you because you're a kid, right? But the I didn't see the, the drinking like that. I saw people sitting around having intelligent conversations, particularly my dad and his friends, and um, you know, having his, and they had intact brains and they were cool and it, it was just normalized, right? So I never had this idea that it makes people stupid or anything like that. Then when I was in college and I was an athlete. Um, it helped to calm me down, okay? Helped to calm me down, and also as a, as a dancer, I'm an artist, you know, I have my artistic side as a dancer, drumming, that helped me to connect. It helped me to, to um, just like really get into my zone. Whereas I felt like, I remember when I was in college, I felt like, I remember making an observation that alcohol made me feel less connected with my body. I can't necessarily say that now, it depends on how much, you know, I drink, but I just, if you drink too much, okay, like it just makes you feel less connected with your body. Um, and so th I'm taking a class right now that's about the history and, and policy, okay, of um, cannabis prohibition in this country. And it's crazy because you know what? It brings me right back around, right back around to nutrition, okay? So like I said, the graduate program that I was in for um Applied Physiology and Nutrition was the only nutrition program in the country that did not take money from the food industry, okay? So that means all the nutrition dietitian people you know who went to school with the food companies, okay? And so I'm not somebody, I, I believe in academia, okay? Um, I believe in, in book knowledge and studying, but I also believe in critical thinking, doing your own research, okay? Doing your own research and constantly researching, especially if you're a practitioner and you're advising people. Because I never wanted anybody to come to me for help because they're trying to improve their health and their body. And I give them the wrong advice and mess them up. So I take what I do very seriously. And I care about myself. <laughs> I want to age as gracefully as possible. And I have all these problems. So prevention is the best medicine. So those, for those two reasons, I've been very serious about that, right? So looking back, all right, from 1840 to about 1920, okay, um, cannabis was um, in the pharmacopoeia in the U.S., okay, which means the, the accepted met the book of medicines that doctors used. Cannabis was heavily prescribed over 100 conditions regularly, okay. It was one of the most 